talk a little bit about what your background looked like. I happen to know that you were a, uh, a dominant, cat-like quick guard in college, played basketball at Colgate. Um, but what beyond that prepared you for doing what you're doing now? 20 years and 30 pounds ago, <laughs> cat-like quick, exactly. I think the, the key thing is I've got a love of the game. Mm-hmm. So I'm very comfortable in this environment because I, uh, I'm well-versed in it. I talk the game. I know the game. But more so, I think it gave me that competitive fire and that competitive advantage where I want to win. You know? and, and winning translates all things. It yeah. translates in the business world. It translates on the court. It translates in your personal life. So it kind of gave me that, um, that feeling of, hey, you know, I'm a competitor and uh, I want to win. And you know, certainly an education at Colgate helped me to at least give me some of the intuitive skills and, and some of the uh, intellectual capacity to be able to do what I do. Right. Talk a little bit about what your career looked like leading up to this point, you know, because you, you had a really interesting career path and fairly circuitous, you know, from being at Colgate to all of a sudden, mm-hmm. which is not all of a sudden, being here in Houston. Yeah, it, it didn't quite happen overnight, but it... Um, for the last 20 How years, I'm 43 years old, just turned 43. I know I look 48, but I'm 43. I <laughs> um, uh, started off right out of college. I wanted to be a broadcaster. So I went to work at NBC Sports. I was a page at, at NBC where I worked on some of the NBC Sports programs. I worked on Saturday Night Live, David Letterman. So, uh, you know, you can imagine as a young kid in New York City working on all those shows, you, you, you have a good time. But you absolutely make no money and you realize that there's got to be another path there for you. And so I was kind of led to sports marketing. A friend of mine had a a small tennis tournament in New Jersey, and they needed somebody to help sell. So I went out there, sold tickets, sponsorships, you name it. I mean, I was the one-man band at 23 years old. Um, And I wouldn't think that's entirely lucrative doing that, was it? Well, at that time... It was more than being a page at, at, Trust me, <laughs> at that time, anything was yeah. lucrative for me. Um, but no, it's not entirely lucrative, but it's the kind of thing where you can get your career started and you can get, a, you, you can get your, your self-positioned for the next step. You know, everything, like most anything in life, it's what are you doing to position yourself for the next step and then how are you going to take advantage of it. So I was working very hard and got noticed by another group out of Washington, D.C. Um, they offered me a job there. It was a company called Dell Wilbur & Associates. And they were a small sports marketing firm. And I worked there for four years where we established a what we call a properties division where we represented bowl games and we represented networks to create college basketball doubleheaders, those types of things. And learned a lot about the television industry, learned a lot about uh, how to kind of package and market collegiate properties. Um, And then uh, when you talk about the circuitous part, then after that, I went to Dallas where I started a company with a group of other guys called Streetball Partners. And Streetball Partners was NBA Hoop It Up and NFL Air It Out and Major League Baseball Yard Ball and, you know, the PGA Golf Skills Challenge. So we were partners with NBC Sports who actually bought a, an equity investment in our, in our company. But that started out from nothing. I mean, that was grassroots. It was, scratch, it was a it? three-on-three basketball tournament in the West End in Dallas, Texas. And my old boss, guy named Terry Murphy. Uh, Terry put it together as a fundraiser for D Magazine. Do you remember how many teams were in that first tournament? The first tournament, I think, were about 350 or so. And then by the time we finished up in 1990, around 96, 97 was really when the high point was hitting. We were running probably over 300 events in 12 countries, and we had over 250 employees. And then that company, you know, just kind of grew and we integrated with a couple of other uh, smaller sports marketing companies. And uh, by 1999, most of the principals who had been involved had left, either bought out or decided they wanted to retire and do something new. And I was there as the president from 99 to 2000. Um, We sold the remaining part of the company. And then before you know it, I'm down here in Houston.
for a couple of years prior to me being named CEO, we had been doing a lot of work on our culture, talking about, okay, who are we as an organization? What do we, what do we believe in? What are our behaviors? You know, wh how do we want our employees to who behave? Who have been having those conversations? Oh, uh, the senior management team here, okay. me included, as well as our CEO, and really throughout the entire organization, because we had been, you know, we were in a similar situation where I was in streetball in that when we were over at our old building, bef before we moved into Toyota Center, we only had about 80 employees. And we went from 80 employees to about 240 in the span of three months. I mean, that's like a whole other universe It's overnight. like adding two new companies yeah. and bringing them all together and then taking them, taking those employees from scratch and trying to, you know, implement them into a culture that, that you want to be out there, that you want people to be able to say, whether it be... Uh, a corporate partner, a player, a coach, a, an employee, you want to be able to say, okay, when I think of the Houston Rockets, this is what I think of. It's the identity of the organization. The identity of the organization, and then what do they stand for and where are they going? Right. And, and so trying to get all those things together at one time with an influx of 150 plus employees is a pretty daunting task. So we were working on that pretty heavily for a couple of years and with some degrees of success but also as when you go through programs like that uh, you have immediate success because you're starting to put a vision out there but then you also backslide and so we're in a situation where we're starting to backslide a little bit because there was some concern in um, transition of leadership you know the our CEO was leaving uh, there was a void there uh, Mr. Alexander hadn't, hadn't appointed me yet um, even though I was kind of the de facto CEO because I was at that level where I was overseeing all the business units. Um, but there's, you know, there's still that void and somebody's got to step into the void and make sure that you keep everything going and that you put your stamp on it. Let me ask you a question about bringing on 150 new employees in three months. Sounds like by definition, I mean, you're just running and gunning to borrow a basketball phrase. Is there any way that you can bring in 150 people in three months who every single one of them fits in that culture that you're going to try to establish? No, you can't. But what you can do is you can try to put a baseline understanding on it and say, okay, as you come in, and, and you also hope that you hire people with similar characteristics. So you're looking for an affinity with, with the people that you currently have here as the leaders in the organization saying, okay, I, I like this guy or I like this gal because... I can see that they would define with the same things I do, mm -hmm. and they believe in the same things I believe in. Um, so that would be ideal. Now, in in practice, it it can be a little little difficult because it takes you back to that circuitous takes you back to the circuitous route. Plus, you're dealing with people, right? Right? You're always dealing with people. It's uh, if theory. If you had three is, years to bring them in, you're still dealing with people. If you had three years to bring them in, because then you also then you get into the maturation rates of okay, now what's next, mm -hmm. right? But bringing them in all at uh, you know all in that defined window, it was really you know it's like the Phoenix Suns offense. You know, it's like okay. <laughs> you know, every seven seconds, you're bringing somebody else in. Um, but uh, you just hope that you can put together a, a concept and a baseline understanding of, okay, culturally, this is who we want to be. And then you kind of stay at it and you stay at it and you stay at it.